Hi everyone. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on the DBE Math Score Paper 1 in the next series of videos. Um, just to look, right, let's just jump into some of the instructions. I know that this is often a part that people don't look at, but that is not a good idea. This often will help you get a couple of extra marks, okay? So what's important is they say here, answers only will not necessarily be awarded marks. So if you give an answer, give a reason for your answer, right? It's important to give reasons why you're saying, to, reasons to why you're saying something, okay? So show all calculations. Important here, yeah? round off to two decimal places, right? Perfect. And let's just see if there's anything else, right? Remember, you must use the correct calculator. Don't use a calculator that's going to give you an unfair advantage. And then it also says diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale. Okay, so don't be using a ruler on the diagrams, not going to help you. Okay, now also an information sheet is important, right? That's at the end of the paper. So let's just see if I've got my information sheet. Oh, there it is. Perfect. We're going to need some of those formula. And then obviously write neatly and legibly. Okay, so let me put that down and let's jump into question one. Now, remember, each question must be started on a new page. I'm not going to do that because, remember, I'm not being marked. You guys are being marked, and each of your questions are marked by different people. So they separate your paper up, okay? That's why it's important. Um, and it also just helps people access things, okay? Access your marks and access your answers, okay? So let's just jump in. Enough talking now, marks. Let's get into the maths, okay? Question... Question one. Okay, so question one of uh, paper one always deals with a bit of, um, I was going to say plagiarism, definitely not plagiarism, um, factorization, and just testing some of your understanding around that, right? So let's just jump into the questions. Remember, your early ones are going to be easier, and then it's going to ramp up a little bit, okay? So for 1.1.1, we have x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0, okay? And they've told us to solve for x. Right, we want to get what is the value of x so that this side equals zero. Now, what we do, right, is the easiest way to do this is to factorize it, okay? And factorization means you get it into a form that you can find its factors, okay? And factors mean, right, where it equals zero in this case, okay? So, what we do is we say, what are the different factors of six that we can use in this form, right, in order to get this. So we have one, we have two, we have three, and we have six, okay? So now we have to get negative six over here by multiplying two of these, right? So one of them is going to be, have to be negative, and we have to get positive five. So we know that we have to get it in this form, right? Because that's how we factorize. This is a form of factorization that I'm showing you here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put x in each of these little brackets, okay? And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say uh, plus 6 and minus 1, okay? Now you could be thinking, okay, Margs, but like that's all good and well, but like how did you get that? So I know that negative 1 times 6 is going to give me negative 6, right? But positive 6 minus 1 is going to give me positive 5. So I have to always take into account my signs. If I'd made this negative 2 and negative 3, right, then we would have got negative 5 over here and positive 6. We would have changed the question. Not going to work. If I made it positive 2 and positive 3, then I would have got positive 5, but then I also would have got positive 6, okay? So signs are very important. So then we say x minus 1 equals 0 or x plus 6 equals 0, okay? And the whole point of that is that one of these brackets has to equal 0 for that side to equal 0, okay? Because 0 times something gives me 0 or something times 0 will give me 0. So x is either going to equal 1 or x is going to equal negative 6, okay? So that is sort of very entry level, but that's where they sort of want you to start gearing up to a little bit of the more difficult questions, okay? So let's move on now to 1.1.2. It says 4x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. And it says correct to two decimal places. Now, let me tell you something. When you see something like this, it should trigger in your mind quadratic formula, okay? 
Because when they say to two decimal places, you know that there's going to be something where you use a calculator, right? You don't do two decimal places in your head unless you're some sort of mad genius, right? So when they say two decimal places, they want you to use the quadratic formula, which is this formula over here. Okay? So we know that we're going to be using that for this question. Don't even think about doing anything else. Use the quadratic formula. If they say to two decimal places, they've given you a clue. Okay? So 4x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. A equals 4. B equals 3. And C equals negative, ooh, a negative 5. Okay, I'm just writing those out to help me when I plug stuff into my quadratic formula. Okay, let me make sure you can see this. Okay, so we know, let me just move this over here so that you can see. Excellent. Cool. So let's just type that into our calculator. So negative b is negative 3. Remember, it's plus minus. So we're going to have to do this calculation twice to get our answer. Okay, square root. b squared is going to be 9. You can put 3 squared if you don't know what that is. I'm just trying to, um, I'm just using my own little insights there. But you don't have to do that. You can type it exactly as it is. Let's just make sure that's all correct. Okay, so. The one answer is zero, right? 0 0.8, okay? So we know that when this little sign here, this plus minus, it means that it can be negative or positive, okay? So when it's positive, x is going to equal 0 0.8. What's important here, right, is that you must actually write out the equation, okay? So don't just do what I've done. That's very bad exam technique that I'm showing you there. So don't... Do as I say and not as I as I do, <laughs> okay? You must make sure you write this out because you'll get marks for showing that substitution. Also, if you if you kind of write this out and, then, and make an error when you put it into your calculator, at least you can get marks over here, okay? So there's the one. And then let's now put the negative sign in here, guys, so that we can make sure that we get all our alternatives, okay? Or x can equal negative 1.55. Now, importantly, guys, um, what we've done here is we've rounded off to two decimal places. I almost did that without thinking, but I want you to make sure that you round off correctly, okay? Because you'll lose a mark if you don't round off to two decimal places because they specifically asked you to, okay? So that is that question done. Let's jump into 1.1.3. Let me move that up so that you can see things. And that I am not teaching nonsense. Okay, so next one was 4x squared minus 1 is less than 0. Okay, so this is what we call an inequality. An inequality, right, generally has one of these crocodile mouths, right? Either this way or this way. Okay, that's what we help helps us identify that. So what we're going to do, and I'm sorry if I'm talking a bit fast. Let me just calm down a little bit. Is we're going to factorize this side. Okay, and then we're going to have to find the values where it's less than zero. And that's why an inequality can be a little bit tricky because you can't just find the factors and say, oh, it's equal to this or equal to this. You have to give it interval because we're talking about a certain set of conditions. Okay, now 4x squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares, right? Because 4 is square of 2, x is square of x, 1 is square root of 1. And there must always be a minus or a subtraction sign. Okay, so, right, that is our answer. If you're thinking, oh, Margs, what are you doing? This is a specific technique. It's called the difference of two squares. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go over your notes again for difference of two squares. So when you have two squares, there's a negative in the middle, then you take the square root of that the square root over there, then you put negative of the square root of that and positive of the square root of that. It's a technique, okay? So now we know, right, that our, what we call them here are critical values. I'm calling them CVs, right? It's not a curriculum vitae. It's our critical values are going to be 1 over 2 and negative 1 over 2, right? That's where each of those equals 0. But you have to see where it is less than zero. That's what an inequality is, less than zero. So let's put in our values on a timeline. 
and figure out whether it's this, 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 or a combination of one of those intervals. So what we do is we say, okay, let's just find a value, right? Let's just find a value where it is less than zero. So if it's less than zero, we're looking for negative, right? We're looking for negative values, okay? But that doesn't just mean negative on the timeline. It means when I plug in a value into here, the side is negative, less than zero. So you, you, it's not just negative values, it's where the inequality is negative. Okay, so let's plug negative one into there and see what our answer is. So two times negative one minus one, right? And then we have two times one plus one. It is negative, okay? So we know that it's negative over there. That's quite cool. Let's try where it is zero. When it's zero, it's going to be two times zero minus one. And then we have two times zero plus one. Okay, so it is going to be negative there as well. Okay, so let me just see if I did this correctly because that is very unlikely. So I know that that's definitely correct, but maybe I typed the other one in wrong. Okay, let me just see. This is just a lesson in calculator work here, guys. Um... Ah, you see, this is a plus. I was right. My instincts were correct. Okay, there's a lesson in and, of the, in and of that mistake that I made. Make sure you put things into your calculator correctly. Okay, so now we know that's positive and we know that's negative, but we just need to know about this side. Okay, so let's just use one. Okay, so you might be saying, but Margs, why don't you just use the critical values that you calculated? Well, why I don't do that is because you don't necessarily want to know what the value is at that point. You want to know what the value is on either on all the sides of that point. Okay? And you see that that side is positive. Okay? But we said we only need negative. So we know that x is going to lie in between a half and a negative a half. Do you see that? Okay. That is what we are trying to achieve, right? We're trying to see where it is less in relation to these critical values. So when it is between a half and a negative a half, it is negative and it then meets the criteria. So that is our answer. Okay, very, very important question. I cannot tell you how often people get questions like this wrong. Okay, now let's move on to 1.1.4. And this will be the last question for this video. Okay, 1.1.4. We have the square root, oh, the square root of the square root of 32 plus x. And then we have the square root of 32 minus x, right? Okay, that's quite an interesting one. Okay. And then what we have is we have that equaling x. Okay. And they want us to solve for x. Okay. So they're definitely asking us quite a variety of questions here, which can be sometimes a little bit overwhelming, but we just need to make sure that we know what is going on, okay? And that we work through stuff methodically. Maths is not a reason to stress, okay? We just need to apply ourselves, okay? So what I'm thinking, right? And I don't know if you agree with me, but from what we learned up here, we did dots, right? And what we can see is this is actually kind of dots, isn't it, right? We see there's a positive, we see there's a negative, we see there's a square root there. So it's very, if we rewrote this, we could actually write it as 32 minus x squared equaling x, okay? And the reason I say that is because I've identified dots, okay? I've identified dots, okay? And that's why it's important to know your different methods. Now, the way that we generally do this is we try to get rid of the square root, okay? So the reason how we do that is we square both sides. Now, when we square both sides, it's very important that we check our answer at the end because sometimes we get invalid solutions, okay? Whenever you square something, we get, we, you must always check your answer because, right? And the reason is because if I say negative 2 squared, just as an example, that equals 4, Right? But 2 squared also equals 4. But negative 2 and 2 may not both be solutions. Maybe only one will. 
So that's why we have to check because when we square, it allows us to have both a negative and a positive solution. Okay. So when I square all of that out, I get 32 minus x squared equals x squared. Okay. Now it's just some basic algebra. So we have 32 equals 2x squared. Okay. I brought that that side. And then we have 16 equals x squared. Okay, now I square root both sides because I only want x, right? I only want to find the value of x, not the value of x squared, right? Then I get that x equals plus minus 4. Like I said, we should anticipate, right? We get two values of x. Okay, now let's go back and let's check if we put plus and minus 4 in there, what would happen? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub it into this form. Right, the one we got previously. So I'm going to sub into this. Okay, that was what we got over here before we squared both sides. So let's do the negative one first. All right, so 32 minus negative 4 squared. Okay, so 32 minus negative 4 squared, right, gives us 4. Right, so it should give us negative 4. Right, so when I say x equals negative 4, right, the answer to this is actually 4, right? And that means that negative 4 is not a solution, okay? Not a solution, but when x equals 4, right, let's just put that in there. It equals 4. So we know that that is a solution because then x equals 4. So that, sorry, that doesn't equal minus 4, but that does equal 4. Right, let me just see, you can see that. Oh, you can, excellent. Right, so the answer here is x equals four. Sorry for my tardy laying out here, but that is the answer, okay? Very important, when you square, always check your answer, okay? That's the end of this video, guys. That's 1.1. Next video, I'm gonna do 1.2 and 1.3, okay? I hope that was helpful.